So welcome sports fans. Uh, today's video we're going to be taking this CBR 600F fuel tank and we're going to be giving it a nice thorough clean, getting all the rust out of it and giving it some sealant. So for this job what we've got, I've not actually done this before but we've got some fuel tank sealer, two part epoxy sealer. So it comes as a two part you need to mix together there. We've got 20 litres of white vinegar. We've also got a new petcock tap and fuel filter gauze coming. That's on the way, it's not turned up yet because this has all fallen apart, obviously. So this actually fell apart inside the tank. Um, and without this vital tool, which is magnetic and has a claw to go in and it is also flexible so it's a fantastic tool so very worthwhile getting yourself one of those so i managed to use that to drag the old filter gauze out of there which obviously as you can see is completely finished so i've tried to get some photos of inside of the tank for you guys to see It's not fantastic without the light in there, but it is quite rusty. It's been sat for about five years. So I've not done this before. So the process is gonna be, the tank's empty. We have blanked off the fuel feed with a little plastic, a little rubber bung. The process is gonna to be to take it and wash it out with some diluted uh, warm washing up liquid and then fill it to the brim with the white vinegar, leave it for about two days, flush it out, and then quickly do the tank sealer on the inside to stop any flash rust happening. And we'll see what the results are like. Here we are then, folks. Stage one is just basically getting the tank, giving it a good flush out with some washing up liquid and a hose, just to get any of the large bits of rust particles out that we can managed before adding any of the vinegar. Now some people might be asking uh, why we're using vinegar for this rather than an actual tank sealer and um, basically it's something that I saw online that worked um, I fancied trying it out and I could get hold of it a lot easier and quicker. It was also reasonably cheap I think it was about £20 for the 20 litres of white vinegar so probably around the same price as a proper, proper tank flush cleaner but I could get it a lot quicker so I thought we'd give it a try see how it turns out so we've just flushed all of that loose debris out of the tank uh, this tank is off of my own bike and it's it's not in the best condition bike anyway there's there's rust spots on the tank on the outside etc so so I'm not taking too much care when I'm moving it around but obviously I'm not throwing it around denting it all up so here's the vinegar going in we've got 20 litres in total, try and spice things up a bit, we go for a bit of a long pour. A little spill there at the end, not a bad effort though considering, quite windy today. So we give it another try, see if we can get this one a bit better. Long pour success. Last little bit going in. So this is how it now looks after it's been flushed and filled up with vinegar. Uh, I've taped the top of the tank up and left it for two days sitting there, just agitating it now and again, giving it a quick spin round. So I've tried to pick a nice, decent, warmish day outside to do this. Quite windy, but a nice warm day to try and dry the tank out quick. So we've emptied the vinegar out already and we've just given it a quick flush through with some fresh water just to see how it comes out and if we're happy with it, flush out any other loose debris. So now after the vinegar has been sat in two days and been flushed out, this is how the tank looks on the inside. I'm really pleased with how that's come out. Got rid of all the rust particles in there, nice and clean and shiny. 
So this isn't really necessary. We could go straight ahead and dry the tank and seal it. But I had a bit of um, a bit of brick cleaning acid, which is basically just hydrochloric acid um, left over from a previous job. So I just thought I'd give it a quick rinse out with a little bit of diluted hydrochloric acid in there just to get any little tiny bits knocking around in the corners that I may have missed. So not really necessary. The tank looks very, very clean just from the vinegar. But as I had it, I thought I'd give it a quick try. And this stuff's readily available from any hardware store, so it's easy to get hold of. So we give it a little swirl around in there, and then we'll get some boiling water from the kettle and some washing up liquid and give it another quick flush out. It'd be ideal if you could do this and get it in the tank rather than all over the top. Again, still a very windy day. And that's the tank hopefully now clean. Next step is to dry the tank before we install the lining. Um, really, really important points this. Um, make sure your wife is out of the house whenever you're doing this. The last thing you want to be doing at this point is letting her see you using the hairdryer to be working on a, a motorcycle fuel tank. This could potentially end your marriage. Do it when she's out. I'd also pick a very, very warm day to do this on so that you can do it outside and use the heat from the sun to dry and dry the tank out as quick as possible. And utilising a hairdryer, an airline and the heat from the sun will dry all the residue out of the tank. You want to try and do this as quick as possible to stop any flash rust occurring. Once you're happy it's all dried out, we're ready to add some of the sealer. So here we are with this two part epoxy sealer ready to go. Giving the, the first part a little mix up, getting the activator and pouring them together and stirring them thoroughly trying to get them as well mixed as possible. Now I did find where this stuff had been sat for a little while I actually had to get a an old building paddle mixer out on a drill and give it a really, really good mix up using the paddle mixer. That ensured everything was thoroughly mixed, all the hardener was mixed in nicely. Now it's just a simple case of pouring the mixture in, sealing the top of the tank up and swilling the tank around, getting it in all the little nooks and crannies inside. A piece of advice I would give here after doing this job is only pour in a little bit at a time of what you think you might need. Um, move the tank around, swill it about, and then add some more if required. Um, what I done was poured the whole lot in, and actually it then made it difficult to try and drain any excess out of the tank. So it's easier to add a little bit at a time than what it is to potentially drain all the unused epoxy out of the tank afterwards. I spend a good 10 minutes just turning the tank round, making sure it's covered all the internal surfaces as best as possible. And once you're happy, you've coated all the internal surfaces, drain any remaining epoxy sealer back out into the, the pot to dispose of correctly. Like I say, I didn't actually need this whole pot in this tank, but I did add it all in at the start. So now I'm left with the trouble of trying to actually remove all the unused sealer. And this is the finished result, guys. So this is red in colour so you can see where it's sealed up on the tank it's very difficult again to get good photos in there but it's done a thorough job sealing all the inside of the tank well this is the new petcock and the new filter gauze very important to not get the petcock and your pet's cock mixed up because if you do and you accidentally install your pet's cock in this tank you're definitely going to have a problem with fuel starvation to the carburetors so very simple design on this one you've got reserve off and on on is what you use when it's closest to payday, uh, beginning of the month. Reserve is kind of when you're starting to go into the overdraft to go out for your nice Sunday rides. And off is unfortunately when you can't afford to put fuel in it anymore. And here it is installed, all ready to be put back on the bike. Here we go then guys, tank's back on the bike. All the fuel hoses are connected up and she's got a little bit of uh, E5 Super Unleaded in there. Very important to use that on these older carburetor bikes. If they're sitting especially, it stops the, uh, the float bowls from coming up. I've had it started just to flush it through, so we shall fire it up for you guys now.
there we have it another job complete uh, looking forward to putting this one back together and taking you guys out for a little ride it's got quite a lot of sentimental value this bike which i can explain in another video uh, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to comment and leave anything in the comments that you'd like me to cover in future videos look after yourself guys take care